Welcome back, everyone. Now it's time to talk about how we move the bones at a joint and with an introduction to muscle tissue. So after this introduction, I would like you to be able to describe the different types, functions, and properties of muscle tissue, differentiate a muscle belly, fascicle, fiber, and a myofibril, describe how muscle cells or fibers are formed, and describe how muscles grow during and after maturity. So there are three types of muscle tissue. They have similar properties, but differ microscopically. Striated muscles have dark and light bands under the microscope. Muscle types also vary on the number of nuclei and whether they are activated voluntarily or involuntarily. Our focus in this block will be on skeletal muscle, which is for the most part voluntary, and you'll learn with Dr. Kingston about smooth muscle and with Dr. Bernowski about cardiac muscle. So almost everything we do is initiated by muscles. When you're typing or writing, blinking, following my laser pointer across the screen with your eyes, and when you breathe. So skeletal muscles alone can make up to 45% of our body mass. And the average is more about 20%, but this is a lot. So in total, there are over 600 skeletal muscles. So we'll talk about quite a few specific muscles, but we'll only scratch the surface on all of the ones in the body. The functions of skeletal muscles are varied. We know that they inflict forces on bones to produce movement. They also stabilize movements like we can see here with this person standing on one foot. Muscles move substances around our body, like here. Muscles are helping veins return blood back to the heart. And also they produce heat by involuntary contractions, also known as shivering. And these, that heat is carried away through the vasculature. Now the, in the image here, we can see a heat map of a, this person's lower limb before and after riding a stationary bicycle. So muscles like nerves respond to electric or chemical signals with an action potential that passes the impulse through the cell through ion channels opening. A muscle also has the ability to shorten which generates tension and pulls on the attachment points. It can also stretch. And we see that muscle has the ability to return back to the same shape and size. The muscle fibers, which are the muscle cell, contain myofibrils. So many myofibrils make up one muscle fiber. Now muscle fibers are organized into a muscle fascicle. And a group of fascicles makes up the muscle we would see at a gross anatomical level called a muscle belly. We see here from the muscle belly, this is where the tendon is attaching the muscle to the bone. So muscle, as with other parts of the musculoskeletal system, is derived from mesoderm. So mesoderm differentiates into these myoblasts, which will fuse with one another to eventually form what is called a muscle fiber or cell. Does the fusion of these cells remind you of a different kind of cell, maybe one of our osseous cells? Remember that one of them is formed by the fusion of monocytes, and that's the osteoclast. They're formed by the fusion of cells as well. So both of these, osteoclasts and muscle fibers, are multinucleate. So you can see the many nuclei of each here. So some myoblasts remain around these muscle fibers, and these then are called satellite cells, and they maintain a limited ability to regenerate muscle tissues. 
The initial formation of a muscle cell was through fusion of many myoblasts. So how does it grow and how does it regenerate? Well, shortly after birth, we have the number of skeletal muscle fibers that we will have for life. So while we cannot increase the number of fibers, these fibers can get larger. So this, of course, is not through sheer will alone, but instead through some repetitive movements. This process is called hypertrophy. So in the image, the red dots are myofibrils, and these make up muscle fiber. Now here we have it shown as four muscle fibers making up a muscle belly, which would be a really tiny muscle. So this is just meant to be conceptual, but we'll say this muscle belly has four fibers, and with hypertrophy, it, rema it maintains those four fibers, but each enlarges by increasing the number of myofibrils and mitochondria. Now we made it through the beginning of muscle tissue. So for our first question, which of the following is a muscle cell? A muscle belly, fascicle, fiber, myoblast, or myofibril? So pause so you can review the terminology and choose your correct answer. And again, try to think about what you remember about each of these terms. So when you're ready, let's talk about this question. So we'll remember that a muscle belly is what we can see gross anatomically, like this portion here. And a belly is made up of multiple fascicles here. And these fascicles are a combination of muscle cells, or what else are they called? Muscle fibers. Now, myoblasts actually are those that fuse together to form muscle fibers. And myofibrils are the parts that make up one muscle fiber. Thank you for your attention, and I will see you in the next video.